Yes. You have so many, don't you? Yeah, so many. Mom is like, <laughs> brain many. <laughs> Which one is your favorite? Like mother, like daughter. I was like, <laughs> Shona, I was like, Shona. You know, Shona? Yeah. You know, Zichi? Yeah. Let me think. Uh, while, you're think while you're saying yours, I'll be thinking what <laughs> okay, it means. Right. Um, I like one that says, I'll say in Shona, but I'll explain what it means. Um, Mm. Uh, look for one. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't remember it. I can't remember at the moment. Uh, I like poetry because um, uh, it's part of uh, uh, what happens when we are growing up. Because when you learn to speak, you learn sounds and voices, and in poetry, it's like sound plays a mo uh, and rhythm plays uh, a most uh, most uh, a bigger part. Um, and when I was growing up, I liked to recite poet uh, poems, and I also liked to recite uh, games and verses. And I joined the choir, so it all came together. And when I was on my gap year, I had time to go out and listen to the nature, is birds singing, uh, sounds from aeroplanes and, and, and rivers. So I could relate these sounds to music and to what I was doing. And when I started teaching, I also used the same sounds to teach my students to speak English, and to know about language, because our language uh, is similar to English. And the way you teach English is the way English language is the way you teach Shona language. Um, I think the one thing I'll keep saying, I've been saying, especially for the past few uh, months, it's, it's standing out a lot to me, it's, like it's such a euphemistic language. Um, like people, the way they talk to each other, actually throw a lot of shade and they're quite like, <laughs> they, you know, but, they, but they're not straightforward. They just know how to, there is an art to speak in Sean, I think, that allows you to not say, to say what you mean without actually being harsh. Uh, with being, you know, you're quite like, you know, you kind of cushion it a bit. Um, and I find that really poetic because I think poetry can like, you know, cover, shroud things in so many things. You're, you could be, you could be saying something, but like the words are saying something totally different. And I think it's all about tone and, and setting. And then that kind of defines whether that person's actually being rude or if they're being firm or as opposed to the actual words themselves. I think it's very important um, because for a lot of us, our languages are also like part of the history, like the, the history of, of where we come from, because not all of it is written down, it's in song, it's in um, stories, tales, whatever, and they're all in Shona, or let's say whatever language that person speaks. And I feel like if you take away how people, how people speak, then it really takes away a lot to do with the history and the culture. And, you know, I just think language is just so incredibly important. I think it's very people. important as well, because some people have approached me uh, to teach their children Shona language, then I just give them my advice to say they should keep speaking because children have an uh, ability to learn a lot of languages. So they think if they speak two languages, they can't speak English or it will disturb them at school. But what I know is and children can learn so much, uh, so many languages. I know one child who can speak more than four languages and they can read and write it. So they've started speaking in Shona with their children at home. And uh, uh, Belinda and her siblings thanked me when they went to Zim or when they visit their African friends, they come back and say, thank you for keeping speaking the language because we can hear what they are saying and we can also speak during the conversation. Jikon zero joku siyanyika. Netembo kupamuna Patricia Smith. Nokuti. 
nokuti amai vai vesai sai rafachuka kubva munyika yaida kuvanyudza nokuti vainge muswe we arataka tisi wapaikira mambure akavaruka nokuti ganda ravo rakashanduka kuita chito chemajanga nokuti vaive mukadzi anozviriritira asine ino rubatsiro nokuti zuva rakavapisa serufuse rikakonzera nyota nokuti kuchengeta vana vatatu pasina baba kunenge kufamba nechidempo muombodo nokuti vakaremerwa semujakaranda une wema wavasiya neshungu nokuti chi chinosara kana tsaka yapisa nokuti utungamiri wenyika nayo nokuti kusachidzana nedzimwe nyika kwakavakokonyadza musana ukavaita nyoka dzasungirirwa pamenderekedzo dzenzira nokuda kwemakomba mumikwa kwa mikuru nezve hurumende nokuti hondo yechimurenga yakasarudza kuura yavachena nokuti havana kumbodzipurwa pavaigara kubva pasi chigare kupenya kwezuva kusingaperi hakusi chunu kana munhu aine nzara nokuti vaisa zuva kuti zuva rinovira nenguva dzena nhatu nokuti vaisa zuva kuti umambo hwavo ingano asi kuti hutongi hwaiveko nokuti makore maviri akavaita mweni kuvana vavo nokuti vakatanga kukoka dangwe ravo nokuti nzeve dzangu dzainzwa kazeve sevi kewoneko uye uchoko choko neungwere ngwere wemaviri emabek nokuti izwi remushamara rikadzi wechishona aive negodza nzwi akashedzera kekupedzisira nenguva dze sere nechidimbo reasons for leaving home after patricia smiths because because mom was a wave that splashed out of a country which tried to drown her because she was a targetist tell stuck in worn fish net because her skin had turned into a canvas of bruises because she was an independent woman who needed no help because the sun had become so hot like the soil she felt herself dry up because three kids without a man around is like walking around with a dead fish in your purse because each blue jacaranda held a tinge of lilac that left her heavy with longing because what else is left when the heat rises in the kitchen because mugabe in it because sanctions bowed people's backs made them snakes roped around street corners lips cracked skins blacker waiting to buy two loaves of bread because to be a teacher was to be an enemy of the state because of potholes in parliament and the main roads because war veterans decided to kill white farmers because the same white people had never learned displacement even from the generations of field hands whose hands the land once sat in eternal sunshine is nothing with no food in your stomach because she didn't know that the sun could set before 6 p.m. because she didn't know that the kingdom was a myth that only the empire exists because she never thought two years would turn her a stranger to her own children because she sent for her first born because all my ears could hear was goodbye murmurs and the choppy rattles of suitcase wheels on airport tiles because a shona woman's voice drifted from the tanoi because she said final call for the 2030 hours flight to